All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. But today, it's not about me. Today, I I'll chime in and give my thoughts and stuff. But today, much like everyone else on the channel, decided I was like, you know what? Will needs to have a show. And Will has not been on the channel in some time. Will's been a very busy man. You know, he's prepping for life, man. So he's got a he's got a lot of things on his on his plate right now. But a lot. <laughs> Today, uh, we're going to start a series, which you'll see in the next four weeks, of talking about some haunts that we can reminisce on in the past. So obviously, we're not getting a lot this haunt season, but we still have some stuff to keep us occupied. But we want to reminisce a little bit on the past, so I brought Will on, and we're calling this show um, Will's Trip Down Memory Lane. Today's episode, HHN 2017, the very first year Will attended Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, how's it going, Will? Uh, it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. Man, HHN 2017. Uh, that's quite a controversial year at the event, I'd say, at least to uh, us hardcore fans. Uh, you know, famous for its abundance of black walls and some cases <laughs> that were a little, you know, you know, uh, yeah, I liked them, but you know, yeah. uh, they were pretty decent, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the first day I ever went to Horror Nights, so I went one time this year. Uh, the <laughs> and the reason for this is is that I was convinced to go last minute on what was it like November second. So it was like after Halloween and everything. And my friend was like, yo, we got an extra ticket to Horror Nights. You come in? And I was shitting myself. <laughs> I, uh, I was not a person who was into even like horror movies or anything. They petrified me. And um, I went because I just was like, fuck it. What, what, what do I have to lose? And uh, I, that was one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, and, uh, you know, we were getting there and uh, we got there right after we, <laughs> we pulled up to the gates of Universal as the ceremony began. So as we were like, you know, hand them our tickets, all we heard was these chainsaws getting revved up. And uh, that feeling of utter horror is something I will never forget. And, uh, you know, walking down, uh, oh man, what was the scare zone? in uh the first one you walk through uh i want to say it's halloween halloween yeah. yeah uh so you know walking through there you got the big dudes with the teddy bears and stuff like that absolutely petrifying uh we me and my friend had to take a pit stop in the starbucks because we were like okay we need to we need to, we need to catch a break here real quick like 30 seconds in um but uh let's see we met up with some other people uh and the first maze I went through was Horrors of Blumhouse Volume 1. Um, now, this actually has stayed one, like, as one of my more favorite mazes throughout uh, the years. I really, really enjoyed this one. Obviously, I'm a little biased. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, going through there and standing outside, you know, there's the caution tape out front and whatnot i think that was that was the entrance right on the like right yeah what, what it was was like you had the the out so the whole premise of it is like this movie theater is going to be open on purge night screening yeah. movies and the first thing you walk through is actual chaos through the purge and then you make your way to the theater yeah and so and you know you hear a party in the usa blaring and like uh you know there's chainsaws in that like gauntlet part and um the second I stepped in, you know, of course, first there was that like, oh, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm totally, <laughs> what is happening? But then about a fourth of the way through the maze, when you're uh, pushing through the bodies at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the purge section, I had this moment where I was like, this is the greatest shit that I have ever seen in my entire life. And instantly my like, uh, my like, uh, you know, <laughs> my uh, fear turned into like bliss. Like it was just cloud nine. I can't even describe the feeling afterwards, but it was just this total weird, 
you know, flip of the switch, this is the greatest shit I've ever experienced. I just, I, that moment was, I'll never forget that. Uh, and, you know, walking into the next happy death day section, all of a sudden I'm going, whoa, yeah, like through every single scare. And um, it just, it, it was amazing. Um, and then, you know, the sinister part, you, you know, got me, I think I hit the floor at least three times in the next part of that. But of course, with every new scare, it just was like better and better and better. Um, so yeah, that was my, that was like my, uh, that was, that, like, that was like the, the popping of your cherry right there, dude. Like you just popped your hot cherry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I got, I, you know, I gotten over with quick. My fear was out of the way and it was just that that's when the fun stuff kind of begins when you get accustomed to it and acclimated. And, you know, uh, after that, we didn't really know what we were doing. I didn't, I, uh, last time I'd actually been to universal proper, I was two years old. So it was like a, uh, how old was I? Uh, yeah, it was 12 year gap between my, Dude, so uh, it was like a whole new park for you. Then you, you like, you haven't been there since you were two, the parks changed exactly. so drastically at that time. And it's horror nights on top of that. So it's a whole different. Also, I, was two. <laughs> <laughs> I was two years old. Like I wasn't remembering anything, you know, um, me sitting over there, probably in like the curious George water park the entire day, <laughs> but, uh, back right there. Yeah, seriously. Um, but, uh, so I didn't know the layout of the park or anything. So I did miss a good chunk of mazes which i'm a little upset about but you know nonetheless and so let's see what happened next we headed down to uh the back lot you know i had my introduction to the famous uh uh escalator monologue um that i just i i, I still find that goddamn hysterical to this very day i love it so much one of you know one of my favorite parts just a little nugget um but uh then let's see Went to Insidious was our next maze, I'm pretty sure. Oh my God, if I thought The Purge was horrible, I like, you know, uh, in Insidious, I, you know, it just kind of took it to the whole other level. And if I wasn't liking it by that point, dude, <laughs> you know, um, uh, you know, I think I was with my friend and he grabs onto my arm like midway through the maze. And as he's grabbing onto my arm, Another scare hits us. He falls to the floor, yanks me down with him. And we're both like on the floor trying to pick ourselves up and sprint to the next room. And then the next room was the, the jail cell room, you know, where they're all come up to the bars. And uh, I don't know why this happened or I've never seen it happen in other like walkthroughs, but one of the people opened the jail cell and like got out into the middle of the hallway. You know, I thought I almost shit myself. <laughs> And then, of course, that five scare at the end. Uh, I had no idea what hit me, and I walked out of there, hands, you know, going a million miles an hour. Um, just, you know, just one of the best, like, hour and a half of my, you know, <laughs> it's just, it was intense, and it was the best. Um, let's see. From there, we went to The Shining. Uh, it's still in my top five all-time mazes. Uh, you know, it's got its faults. I think it was a stunning maze and equally horrifying. Um, you know, uh, walking through there, you hear the, you know, the score blaring, that bomb, bomb, bomb. I was like, oh shit, it's about to go down. And, um, you know, walking through there with the, uh, what really hit me uh, was for some reason, uh, the blowjob bear scared me really bad <laughs> and out of all of the scares I'm not sure why but he just I think because I at that point I hadn't seen the movie you know I didn't I wasn't into horror or anything like that and um, I kind of saw him out of the corner of my eye but I wasn't really looking so when I fully registered that there was somebody walking at me my like <laughs> my like I just was overcome with fear and I was like what the fuck is that like what is that you know like um, cause I, I didn't know what this was. So it just took me a moment of like figuring out what it was. And that, um, that like that, that unknown was what freaked me out the most. And then, you know, the next room with the, uh, that was the ball, the skeletons. Yeah. The, there. uh, the gold room. 
you know, terrifying. Every time they pull off scares like that, it's always the first few times you go through, just like, I'm going to die here. You know, <laughs> it's like the mannequin scene in The Purge and my, you know, uh, and Poltergeist, the coffin scene. Uh, you know, that's for another episode, but, um, oof. Um, 2018's Poltergeist, man. I can't wait to talk to you about that one. I know that was one of your favorites. That is, I think it is my all-time favorite. I think I have, I have it as um, but then, man, and then those special effects, while, you know, they might not have been on par with Orlando's, still kind of, like, blew my mind, because, you know, you, like, uh, I came from, like, Disneyland going all the time, so I was familiar with, like, the theme park special effects and whatnot, but I had the prior knowledge that this had gone up in, like, you know, a few months, and so to, uh, to see these kind of effects, like just being set up in such a quick amount of time and done with such like effectiveness. Uh, I mean, you know, debate me on the <laughs> elevator scene, but it was still pretty cool, you know, uh, having that massive screen there. That's no easy task, you know? And then the blood all over the floors and the Grady twins like appearing like dead on the floor with the cool peppers ghost, you know, pretty solid. It's a classic Disney move right there, man, if you ask me. Uh, Pepper's Ghost? Yeah. yeah. The whole Haunted Mansion ballroom scene. Uh, so, you know, I made those connections being kind of like a huge fan of Disneyland. I was like, oh, that's so sick, you know, knowing how that worked and whatnot. Especially uh, for something only being temporary as if well, Haunted Mansion is a permanent attraction and then this is only exactly. like a temporary setup. Yeah, having those effects that are, you know, in the same realm even is just mind-blowing. And I think what was interesting, you know, besides me really enjoying the sensation of getting the shit scared out of me, what was really, you know, captivating about Horror Nights 2 was it, it felt like, you know, this massive production, but it was just stripped back enough to where you could tell everything that was going on and being able to kind of sit there and like, you know, or I guess, you know, sit with my thoughts when I got home and kind of dissect how everything was happening and get this full view. You know, if you just turn around and you look at the lights and the fog machines are really, you know, at a cool dimension too. It just, you know, it's, uh, it's a really uh, surreal experience being able to see all of these uh, really common techniques, like so right in your face. Like it's a really cool experience. So right, right after The Shining, what was the next thing you hit? Uh, all right. And then after The Shining came Toxic Tunnel. And I think what the coolest part for me about Toxic Tunnel is, you know, we'd gotten out of The Shining. So you come back around by uh, Transformers and you're walking down and you just get that view, you know, staring at you, the strobe lights. And you're like, oh, shit. And, you know, that massive toxic tunnel banner and you hear the music playing and the lights going absolutely insane, you know, thinking you're gonna have like a seizure in there and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, just super high energy scare actors and, it, you know, it just, you know, keeps that momentum going. And, uh, you know, there's not, not a whole lot to say about it, but, you know, it just kind of kept that energy going. And I, I you know, it's simple, but I love Toxic Tunnel and honestly, all of its incarnations, I think they've been really successful, you know, given that it's an empty tunnel and kind of roughly the same theme. I think they've done a really good job. Uh, and also the scare actors, for some reason, always so on point and high energy, you know? Um, and then let's see, after that, after that came, uh, 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 what was it? That third scare zone. Um, uh, was it Urban Inferno? Urban Inferno, yes. Cool. Urban Inferno. Um, another beautiful, beautiful scare zone that I didn't, I was kind of, uh, you know, my friends had told me it was a scare zone. So I was kind of like, oh, you know, uh, uh, Toxic Tunnel and um, Halloween, you know, that was my, that was my notion of what a scare zone was. So when we walked in there, I was so not prepared for uh, the close quarters, really interactive scare actors. And my God, that scared the shit out of me. And they got real close 
they got real close and I thought they were gonna like scoop my fucking eyeballs out of <laughs> shit. Um, great, you know, beautiful, beautiful set design there. Uh, and of course, just copious amounts of fog. You can't see shit. Still waiting Everything- for that one to become a maze, honestly. That would be such an amazing maze, you know, just the cool, it's like, you know, just pure red. It's like that um, scene from Evil Dead 2013. Yeah, like the blood scene. Just everything just red and fog everywhere. Um, and then, you know, those still walkers gave us some hell at the end and all for the better because, my God, they're so talented. Um, coming out of Urban Inferno, uh, we hit uh asher's evil dead uh so not the most popular maze ever but to me who never experienced horror nights before i kind of loved it uh you know i don't really remember most of the maze except for you know watching it back getting those memories back but you know most of it was vines and black wall and whatnot but one thing i distinctly remember you know i'd never seen the show before uh it took me a while to actually watch the show but you know it's a pretty solid show. Um, but those demon spawn babies, I had no idea what the fuck those were. And so when I saw this gray thing coming at me, bro, I freaked the fuck out. I lost my shit in that maze. Cause those things, like it's the same thing as like the um, uh, blowjob bear from the shining where I, I didn't have the time to like register what I was looking at. And so my brain was just like panic, panic, <laughs> um, and then of course i walked into the room with the massive henrietta puppet which uh to this day i think is still one of my favorite effects it's been an amaze it's just like a a beautiful puppet that was and, the one with uh where ash faces off with him right like that puppet like ash comes out uh, he does a jump scare at you and then the puppet's like dead center it's got the long head and everything yeah that's the one that's the one man that is a wild puppet you know, with a massive neck swinging and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was some scary shit. <laughs> to me, that's what, like, elevated that maze. That's a really memorable scene in my mind. And, you know, also that scene afterward with um, with Ash, you know, they pop out with the gray thing and it comes at him with the chainsaw. Like, yeah, that, <laughs> that was really cool, too, having that pop-out scare with the variant on it. Um, but, yeah, that was Ash vs. Evil Dead. And then after that, Uh, I skipped Saw because uh, I don't know why I did, actually. I just remember skipping it, so I I never experienced it. Um, And then we headed to American Horror Story. And uh, American Horror Story, oh, my Lord. I think, you know, that one has the, at least for 2017, uh, and what I experienced, because I didn't experience every maze, had the most, like, intense... uh, like disturbing atmosphere to it when you're just walking through it. So it wasn't just, the, you know, the scares and whatnot, but you know, that when you're walking outside of, um, of, of their house and, um, and you see, you know, that body burning on the fire and shit and, um, uh, you know, and walking through and uh, <laughs> there were some cool scares where uh, they really used uh, like, corners and angles to their advantage where you'd be walking down a hallway this way and then from behind you you'd have the you know piggy man coming at you with a knife but from behind those totally fucked me up <laughs> like, like you have no idea and then you know uh, that one scene with the thing was it the fingers spinning around on the wall oh the finger yeah the fingers on the wall that was that was nuts dude that was like i was like oh jesus like that that was one of those things that like disturbed me like you know, that one cut, cut kind of deep. Um, and um, of course, the the one thing that got me, I think the worst, was the Stillwalker scare at the end with the big tree dudes, like looking up at these guys and having one just like, <laughs> you know, like fall down on you. Uh, so scary. Uh, really like an inventive scare because on paper, it really doesn't sound that scary. But in practice, holy shit. <laughs> It's nuts, uh, dude. It's like you have a giant group just coming down at you. Yeah, exactly. Like these massive – are those like taller than the regular still walkers? At least it felt – I don't know if that's true. It depends if they got – they may have gotten bigger stilts because you can get some bigger stilts, I think. But Right. 
I mean, I'm just I just give those guys props for just doing that, having to put on stilts and then having to get into a costume. Damn, like a costume like that, like you know, a lot of stilt walkers wear costumes and stuff, but a costume like a tree where it's like you're very limited to your movements. Big like, ass, you know. Yeah. And then having to also bend down all night. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they were well secured, but that must be at least a little nerve wracking, you know, trying not to fall on top of these guests. Um, let's see, American Horror Story. I-, I thought that was just a phenomenal maze. That one really, you know, that was a that was a really cool one because I think that was more of a, uh, one of those really well detailed mazes that like really hits you with the, not only the jump scares, but just the atmosphere inside of there and like the dread that you felt, you know, walking through uh, the, uh, that, oh, the basement where they're cutting open her leg, that super graphic, like uh, cutting into her thigh and like, those contorted like sisters coming out of the uh out of the cave and shit really really incredible um but yeah american horror story monster maze good stuff Um, right there what's that i said good stuff right there man good stuff good fucking stuff um let's see afterward i did not go into uh titans of terror i did the terror tram but i didn't do the maze because i didn't know it was there i like i i, I didn't think that there was any i didn't know water world was there because i didn't know the layout of the park so i just didn't know it was there which i regret deeply because i would have killed i've still never seen jason or freddie in a maze yeah so i you know i'm kind of like god damn it <laughs> missed my chance um but titans of terror terror tram uh i've only seen two terror trams but out of the two this one has to be my favorite obviously there's the controversial bit that uh featuring chucky um but if you know uh getting off the tram and having my first experience staring down a wall of chainsaw wielding life like human-sized chucky's say what you want about the the shameless plug that was fucking scary (laughs) that was terrifying uh, cause you know, besides the scare zone, which that year because of construction and whatnot felt a little empty, you know, you get your scare here and there, but a little short on actors having that like wall of people coming at you, no way to avoid it. Just a totally different sensation. Um, and then after that, the, uh, uh, the crystal Lake motel bit with Jason and all of these counselors in the really cool prosthetics that one girl in particular with her jaw, like, f- am I remembering that right? Her she jaw had her- was like, it looked like it was coming off or something. Yeah, exactly. And this super graphic getting in your face and like, you know, freaking you the fuck out just by yelling at you and shit. And then uh, seeing all of the like super iconic Jason kills with the fucking bed. <laughs> like, that shit was crazy. I, you know, my... Uh, uh, HHN newbie mind was fucking blown at that one. Um, and then of course the, uh, the, the grindstone press the face into it, pull off the bloody fucking just so cool. Um, and also just seeing these Jason scare actors, those are some scary motherfuckers. They are huge. They're like, you they're know? like my uh, size, dude. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You're a big motherfucker, you know, like, these tall ass dudes just like uh seriously like some serious physicality in that thing you know uh and then after that uh of course photo at the Bates Motel that's you know the way they light that is always really cool my my biggest thing with the terror tram is I've always just loved walking those sets because they're so historical it's you know it's so iconic all of it and it's just, you know, you feel like you're just walking through history. Like, I just walked to the Bates fucking motel. And now I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm walking right in front of the psycho house itself, you know? Uh, and, and then that 747 set with all of the Freddies, uh, I had a really funny interaction. One of my first, like, memorable scare actor interactions was a... Uh, um, uh, was a Freddie in a hospital gown 
uh, he walks up to me and he's standing over me. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, of course half like trembling and shit. I'm like, Hey man, how's your recovery going? He's like, man, it's been a rough few weeks, but I'm getting there. And I'm like, praying for your speedy recovery, brother. <laughs> he was like, I appreciate it. And he moved on. And I was like, fuck yeah. That's when I was like, you know, that's another really cool thing about HHN that I really like fell in love with was, and got developed over the years <clears throat> uh, was these scare actor moments where it's a bit more personal because it's that person on person thing. And when, you know, when you're sitting there, you know, fully freak the fuck out of what you're looking at and you know you know all these thoughts going through your head and then these guys you know having these breaking the fourth wall moments just makes it you know uh and it really gives it that personal touch uh let's see after that the fucking texas chainsaw massacre part uh yeah that <laughs> that left a mark that was fucking crazy you know i uh, you know having gone through the rest of the event you know there was that body horror from hs that kind of like got me there you know like disturbed me but seeing like uh, you know for the first time these people laying down on the tables getting cut in half and then leather face of like the jason thing these big motherfuckers you know just walking right in front of you and like revving their fucking chainsaws uh, in such close proximity and in more of like a maze format. Whereas, you know, in the Friday the 13th section, it's pretty like wide open, you know, you don't really get that one-on-one -on -one thing with these big dudes until that moment. And then, uh, and then what fucking uh, nail on the coffin, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Um, you know, face cut off scene where uh, I had a similar experience to a, uh, Thomas, I think it was from TLEV, where the dude holds up the face to you and like, and he held it up right up to my fucking face. And I was just like, I was frozen. I was like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I got a person's face on my face right now. Like, how am I supposed to act? And, um, you know, walked out like, what the fuck just happened? And then I saw the Chucky thing and I was like, ah, that's a little weird. <laughs> you know, even then I was a little bit like, oh, okay, I, I get it. Um, and yeah, fucking amazing. That was my, uh, HHN 2017 experience. That was really a watershed moment in like just shaping who I am. And, uh, one of the most insane nights of my life. I mean, I came home and I, you know, it was like one in the morning by the time I got home, which for me, like a 14 year old freshman in high school, I was late as shit. Um, and I just, you know, my parents opened the door, like super fucking groggy to let me in, you know, cause they just woke up because they'd gone to bed like half hour earlier. Um, and I just was like, you're not gonna believe what happened. And I just talked their fucking heads off for like an hour. And they were like, please, can I go to sleep? I was like, whoa, I gotta tell you what happened then. You know, just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. And they were like, this guy needs to go the fuck to bed. Uh, you know, it was a Friday and I was all amped up on uh, first HHN night and I couldn't stop talking. Like, if you told me to like be quiet, I like physically would not have been able to. I was so excited and giddy at what just happened. And then, you know, the, for the next few weeks, I was like, I got to find out more about that. What the, what the fuck is that? Like, what am I missing here? And so I spent weeks and I found, you know, uh, are sick, uh, rest in peace, and um, um, and uh, TLEV, and it just, uh, and then from that point, and then I was watching all these maze point uh, POVs and like studying like previous years, and I was just trying to figure out what was happening, and that was just an insane time of my life that I'm never gonna forget. But that was just so incredible. That was and a that nice was my HHN 2017 experience. Yeah, I know. That was a nice stroll down memory lane right there, man. I had never heard I've heard you talk about mazes and all that, but I've never heard the actual full on Will story of the first year, man. And that sounds a lot similar to my first year in twenty eleven, honestly. But yeah, twenty seventeen has a special place in, in my heart too, because that was the first year we launched the channel and that was the first year we actually got to go to the event as the channel. 
and we've only grown since there. And I owe HHN a lot for the channel. So hearing other people's stories and keeping the HHN alive and everything is just without HHN, I don't think this channel would be what it is. You know what I mean? So HHN has a very special place in all of our hearts. We love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of uh, Will's. What are we calling this show again? <laughs> Will's trip down memory lane. Will's trip down memory lane. Uh, HHN 2017. Tune in next week. He's got more to share with you for 2018 season, which probably safe to say that has his all time favorite maze at that event. So tune Pretty in next easy. week if you want to to hear that story because I guarantee you're not gonna want to miss it. 